Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Monday with Matt. I am, of course, uh, Matt, and we want to thank you for tuning in to C-SPAN. We also want to thank our sponsors, CIBC, for making helping make this possible and all the fun, educational, and entertaining content that we're able to provide for you guys. Uh, today, we're going to be drawing seahorses. So uh, we've gotten some comments saying that they wanted to see seahorses, and I, I thought seahorses are pretty awesome. So that is what we're drawing today. Now, if you are following along, normally I have a sketchbook and a pencil, but today I am using my iPad with a program called Procreate. But don't worry, that doesn't mean that you can't draw along with me. It's I'm going to be using the same type of tools that you would use at home, a pencil, uh, maybe a pen or, or ink, or even just a pencil by itself is fine if you have an eraser. That is often helpful. But uh, I wanted to start by showing some pictures of seahorses. It's always good to look at references. So these are seahorses at the Florida Aquarium here. And uh, whenever you want to draw something, it's good to kind of study that and even use it as a photo reference as you are drawing. So some of the things that, that I'm noticing about the seahorses are some of these shapes that make up the seahorse. So when I start to draw this, I'm not going to start drawing each individual scale and detail. I'm looking for basic big shapes. Okay, so uh, I did a couple seahorses in preparation for this just to show you kind of what we're looking for today. And these are two different seahorses. Neither one of them are super realistic. This is the one I'm going to start with, this really simple, cartoony, and dare I say cute little seahorse right here. And then after that, uh, maybe we'll get a little bit more realistic. So what I'm going to do though here is I am going to just make these guys a little smaller and put them up here in the corner so we can reference those. I'm going to start a new layer here. And I'm using something that looks like a pencil. So this is like just your standard typical pencil that you would see uh, that you would see that you would use anywhere. So again, I'm going to start with with drawing these simple shapes. So for example, I'm going to do a circle. Okay, this is just my rough sketch here. So this circle would be like the head here. And then look at this circle here on this seahorse. We're going to do this here like a big oval. And it's kind of leaning like this, right? It's not it's not straight up and down. So, and then for the tail, uh, I'm just going to do a line, but then and then like a, a circle here. This is my skeleton of my seahorse. Which, by the way, seahorses do have skeletons. They are fish. They are bony fish, which means they have a skeleton made out of bone inside. So they're similar to. Uh, most other bony fish, they just have a different shape and look to them, which is why they're called seahorses. By the way, they're not actually horses. I think everybody knows that, but just in case, I'm going to tell you they're not really horses. Now, we're going to add some details to this. So they've got this cute little rostrum here. So I'm going to draw a little curvy line out like this. And see how it's got this curve here? I could draw a straight line, but it's going to give it a little more character if I give, and this is more realistic too, if I give it this curve and a little curve in here as well, and then just in like that. So here is the our seahorse rostrum, and here's the bottom of its little cheek right there. And the head comes up like this, and then they've got sort of this horse-looking neck that comes around like so. So I'm just going to connect these circles here. And then for the neck, I'm going to come in here and make a little loop little loop design here. Now the reason I'm doing this in what I would say pencil first, and if you're drawing this at home, you want to draw nice and light so you can erase, unless you're using a, a digital program, which there are so many. You can draw on your phone, you can draw on a tablet, you can even draw on a computer in some cases, So, uh, but you can also draw with a pencil and paper. So draw it light so you can, you can change it and erase it, so if I see something that's out of whack, I can change it here before I start getting into more detail. So here's our cute little seahorse belly. Bring that around here and then the back comes in here. Now look at this curve right here. These curves are really important to capture I think the true seahorse shape. So we're going to get this curve right here and bring it around for our tail. The seahorse tails are pretty cool because they are what we call 
a prehensile tail. A prehensile means that they use their tails, they can use their tails to hold on to stuff. So a lot of animals have prehensile tails. Think of a possum, think of a lot of monkeys, think of um, some snakes have prehensile tails, so they can use these just to hold on to stuff. Now, uh, they will usually hold on to things like seagrasses and algaes and stuff that, is, uh, that they're living around. All right, so we're gonna do the other side of the tail here. And the important thing to remember is this tail is like a long tube structure, but it keeps getting thinner as it goes to the end. So if, if I start getting thicker, it may not look quite right. So I wanna kinda of be careful. And this is another way, another time when having this rough drawing is gonna help you out here, because I'm gonna probably have to make some adjustments. We're gonna loop this around maybe like that. There we go. There's our seahorse tail. I think it looks pretty good here. Now on the back, they have a little fin here that sticks out on this little little hump. So we'll just kind of indicate where, where that is gonna be right there. And then they also have another fin that kind of comes out from their little cheek area here. And of course there are different species of seahorses and they don't all look exactly the same. I'm drawing kind of a generic seahorse. I like drawing seahorses because you can have a lot of fun with uh, all the little spiky bits and stuff that they have. Uh, the eye goes right on the top, so right, right, in, this, right in this spot right here. And uh, since this is a cartoony one, I'm gonna make it nice and big. Big eyes often translate as cute when you're drawing stuff, so we're gonna, give this, we're gonna make this one cute. We're gonna focus on the cute with this seahorse right here. And then we're gonna give this seahorse some little spiky things. Looks like my hair in the 80s there. There we go. And I'm not gonna add all the details right now, but um, I'm gonna add some of them just so I know what I'm working with afterwards. So one of the things that makes seahorses look really cool, I think, is they have all these sort of spiky ridges on them. So I'm gonna draw these sort of spiky ridges. I'm just gonna put a few here, and I'm gonna match them on this side. And again, this is really rough, and that's okay because What's gonna happen is we're gonna go in and we're gonna add details when we go in with another layer of pencil or, or ink and we can capture more specific details on these animals. There we go. Now I think this is good enough for our start, starter drawing. If you wanted to, a lot of seahorses have these sort of lines that go down like this, another one that comes down like that. And then what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna connect these with little lines that go over. So you can pencil those in now if you want, sort of segments on the on the seahorse. Seahorse segments. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to, in my case, I'm gonna lower the opacity, which makes it just a little bit fainter, and I'm gonna add a layer on top of it. But if you're doing this at home with a, uh, with a pencil, this is where you would have drawn it light or you would kind of lightly erase it so you can still see it, but, um, but you can go over it with a darker pencil line. Now I'm gonna actually do this with an ink brush. So this would be like using a Sharpie or a pen that you have at home. And I'm gonna make this a nice black color here. And we're gonna get into some detail. So I like to start with the eye. And I'm gonna make, actually make this a little bit thinner One of the advantages of this program is that I can make perfect circles, see that? <laughs> but you can make a perfect circle too, you just have to practice. Just keep drawing it over and over again and then you know, get it to outline. Maybe we'll make this a little bit thicker. And then we will draw a little eyeball pupil in here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna color mine in, but um, I can also erase with mine because I wanna put these little highlights in here for a cute factor. But if you were doing this with marker, you would just leave those blank. Or if you have a little bit of white paint or something, a little white out, um, you could add that as well. All right, now we're gonna get this little rostrum here. And his little cheek. Here we go. Give him a, some little spikes here. See, I'm not really sticking with what I did originally. That's just kind of a rough idea of of what I wanted it to be, but now I'm taking a little bit more time with it and getting it exactly as I want it to be. All right. And we're gonna give him his little 
fin out here. And the way I want to do this is this. I've got these two lines that go out, and then this one kind of comes in, and then I'm going to put these little fin lines going out like that, just like so. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is get this neckline in here. And I'm going to do it back here as well. Oops, and I can see I forgot to, to do a bit here. That's why you want to make sure you get that pencil drawing good, because if you're drawing with a real ink pen, you can't do what I just did. All right, and then we'll get this line. Get his tail going here. And I'm actually just going to draw this tail as a solid line. I'm going to add the details on after the fact. There we go. Mine's not perfect, but that's okay. We'll make it look good. All right, now we're gonna add some more details here. I'm gonna add this line back behind there because you can kind of see through this fin here on most seahorses. It's kind of transparent a little bit. We're gonna put his little hump back here and we're gonna add the other fin right over here. Give that a little curve there, see? There we go. And now we're gonna add some more details. So I'm gonna take this line across here like so. These are representing these little segments on my seahorse. And notice when I'm doing these lines, I'm not just going straight across. What I wanna do is represent that this is actually a round tail, it's like a cylinder. And so when I make these lines, I make them curved just a little bit and that helps to represent that this is a curved space. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to add my little tail details here. Little spiky things on here. We'll do the same back here. And this is basically our, our seahorse. Oh, I forgot one thing. I want to add a little detail on the mouth. Just a little. Now, this is not what the mouth looks like, as in they don't have a little big mouth. Their mouth is really just at the end of this, but I like to give my cartoony one at least the impression that, is this the mouth or does it just look like a little smile? And we'll maybe add some details here as well. Here we go. Now, I want to color this seahorse, so one of the things you can do if you are working on a pencil and paper, if you did ink, then you can actually color usually right over that ink and maybe just go over it again if you need to. Uh, but since I'm working digitally, I can color right underneath here really easily. And I'm going to take this color of yellow right here from this seahorse, make my marker a little bit bigger. I'm just going to outline this just because I want, I want you guys to see the difference. Some of these look good as just black and white drawings, but I want you to see the difference. If you do add a little bit of color, it can really change what your picture looks like. I'm going to do this kind of rough because I don't want to take up all of our time coloring this, but um, again, with the magic of digital tools, I can sort of I won't say cheat, but I can. I have shortcuts. So all I have to do is get this outline in here of where I want this color to sit. A little fin here, I'll color that in. Once I get that outline done, I can just drag and drop a color into this, which you will see in just a second. Now, one of my favorite things about seahorses is that the uh, the males are the ones that have the babies. Whoa, I must have missed a spot somewhere. And what I mean by that is um, the males... Hang on, let me just check something real quick here. 
Uh, the males have a pouch, and the females will deposit their eggs into, I'm missing something here, will deposit their eggs into that pouch, and then what will happen is um, the male will fertilize those, and then they'll carry the eggs until they hatch, and then you get your baby seahorses. So it's kind of like dad is doing the pregnancy. I don't know what's going on with my um, design here. It shouldn't be doing that. So uh, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. We'll just actually color it in. <laughs> Now, seahorses, I, you often see them portrayed as sort of this yellowish color, but there are a lot of different species of seahorses, and they're all different colors. So you can make your seahorse whatever color you would like it to be. And uh, we'll add a little white to the eye here. Whoa, let's make our marker ink pen smaller again. Like that. And then what I want to do is I actually want to take a lighter color of yellow, so we'll take it from this one over here, and I'm going to add some highlights on our seahorse. Now, whenever you're drawing something like this, you wanna think about where is your light source coming from? So let's say our light source is coming from this way here. So it's shining on the eyes there, and we're gonna put some highlights on the top. And what this does is it makes it look like a more three-dimensional object instead of a two-dimensional object. So the light's hitting the back of the seahorse here and it's lighting it up a little bit. See how that makes it look more three-dimensional? <laughs> Give a little highlight over the eye, a little bit on the nose, and then on the top of each one of these, maybe we'll do that too. You can do this with colored pencil, you can do this with crayon, you can do this with paint. All sorts of tools you can use to create art. There we go. Then I'm gonna add some shadows. I'm gonna take a little bit darker color. And think about the stuff that's being hidden from the light. A little shadow under his, under his face. Shadows over here, a little shadow under each one of these, little segments. And you can see how it's starting to look a little bit more three-dimensional there. Now, when I get down here, I'm going to switch to this part because now this part's in the shade or the shadow. There we go. So that's as far as I want to take this one. But this is a pretty basic, simple seahorse. It's a little bit kind of in between these two, I guess. <laughs> but you can see the, the similarities. I took a little bit more time to color these. Now, another thing you can do is you if you want to represent those lines, you can kind of do that too. Decide if you want your seahorse to look like that or not. So there we have uh, another seahorse for you guys to look at. And I'm going to merge these two layers together turn that off there. Um, I'm going to do another seahorse, but real quick, I wanted to show you um, an animal that's related to the seahorse. These are called leafy sea dragons, and these are really, really cool. This is actually a drawing that I did for our camp shirts last summer. So if you come to camp every year, we have not only amazing, fun camps, but we also have really cool camp shirts. And, and if you came last year, you would have got the leafy sea dragons. But you can see, I kind of applied all those same things. You can see some, some shadows here. And I'm limited on colors when I do these because it's a t-shirt. But um, all the sort of same things apply. It just takes a lot more time and detail to get a drawing to look quite like that. But these guys are similar. You can see almost a seahorse resemblance there. They're just kind of bent over and they have a lot more of these leafy appendages to help them to camouflage and blend in. All right, now what I want to do next is I'm going to take and I'm going to shrink these down and I'm going to use them as a reference. We're going to add another layer. I'm going to go back to drawing with a pencil. And I'm just going to kind of uh, try and draw another seahorse, but I'm going to try and make it look a little bit more realistic here and I'm just going to do it in pencil. So I, I'm, still, I'm still looking at this shape. So I'm still looking at this shape right here 
And then I'm looking at this shape right here, almost like an egg, it's appropriate, right? Then our tail will come off over here. Now I'm gonna add this, you can see this kind of peak right here on this animal. We'll add that in. I really wanna get these curves right and everything. That's, that's the important thing. You know, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the negative space, this blue. I'm looking at this shape here. So I wanna make sure I get that accurate. Because if I don't get that accurate, it's, you're just not gonna think it looks that much like a seahorse. So um, gotta get those details. And that's what you're doing when you're doing this rough sketch. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna add the tail here. Put a little rostrum on here too. There we go. And his little protrusion out there for his fin. This guy's tail is curled up right at the end. All right. Okay, now we're gonna give him an eye right here. And this is still where that little other little fin is at here. And we've got fins here as well. And this one has sort of a line that comes down. Goes along that way there. Another one that comes along right through here. And then a lot more of these segments. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna draw some of these segments in here. And again, see how I'm doing this? I'm not making just straight lines because that would look flat. I don't want my seahorse to be flat. I want it to have a little belly so it can carry those little babies in there. And then down here, we're gonna do the same thing. There we go. All right, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lighten this one. Do another layer, and I'm gonna bring this one in. I'm gonna zoom in on it a little bit so you guys can see it better. I'm gonna try and get some of these details right. Let's see, I wanna make my pencil a little bit smaller. If you were using a real pencil, that would be sharpening your pencil <laughs> to make it a little bit smaller. a little eye out like that. And I'm following some of these lines, but I'm just adding more details and, and changing them where they need to be changed. It's still kind of rough, but that's okay. That's kind of what I'm going for with this one. You don't always have to do, you know, pen and ink style thing. You can do rough, you can do painterly, make it look super realistic, cartoony, whatever you want. Maybe he's got some markings here. Now what I'm going to do here is every time I have one of these segments, I'm just going to give a little bit of indication of that, kind of overlap there. Kind of the same thing back here. Now, if I had done this and not put these lines in, I, or if I didn't pay attention to these lines going across, they probably wouldn't have matched up very well. And if you want to draw stuff like this, like I said, have said before, you know, look at a bunch of pictures. Look at a bunch of seahorses. If you can, once we once we get out of the situation we're in now, go to an aquarium and look at some real seahorses. Bring your sketchbook and a pencil. Drawing from pictures is, is great, but drawing from real life is really important. And uh, you will see things when you're drawing from real life that you won't see in a picture, no matter how good that picture is. It's important to, I think, do both. And that doesn't matter if you're drawing seahorses or people or puppies or anything. Do 
these little jagged bits in here. See how we're doing? We're running a little low on time here, so I wanna, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. We'll just kind of indicate the tail. All right, we'll add some more detail in here. Now, if you just wanna stick with just pencil, but you wanna get some of these details in here without the color, doing the shade and highlight, what you can do is you can do that several different ways, and I'll show you a couple of those here in a second. Just get these lines in here real quick. I'm gonna turn off my um, sketch below here. So let's say that I want to show that there's shadow down here. Um, you, can, you can actually shade it in like that. Um, you can also just do little lines. This, you can do what's called cross hatching, and it gives it a different look. And the thing about art is there's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. It's all subjective and, and what you want it to look like. I'm going to do some lines in there. There we go. So you kind of get the picture there of what it would be like to um, to go through this. And you can keep adding more details. I'm gonna add those lines here. There we go. So there's, I would still say, a rough sketch <clears throat> of a seahorse. Maybe I will, let's see, we have a few minutes left. Maybe I'll just add a little bit of color to this one, but um, with, uh, with some, we'll do it like a colored pencil. It's one of my favorite mediums to use is, is colored pencil. So we'll get our yellow we want here. Make this pencil a little bigger. We'll focus on the head, how about that? Now, of course, this is digital, so it doesn't look exactly like a pencil, but you can get it to look pretty close with colored pencil for different things. I'm just gonna focus on, on this part of our seahorse. Now, their eyes are often kind of a yellow color too on the inside or whatever color they are. We'll add a little bit lighter color here. Getting lighter on the fin. Put our white highlights in there. And this is where it can get really fun because you can add uh, not only the shade here like so but you can also then maybe add some different tones for or colors for uh, markings so maybe these markings are brown Back to our shade tone here. Maybe give him a little more highlight on this cheek. <laughs> Help define that a little bit. There you go. Now another thing to, to note real quick here is that um, these drawings can also look a lot different if you change the color of your background. So for example, right now I've got kind of a, a light blue paper color. Um, if I make it darker, it changes the way your animal looks. It can even change the way the colors look. I'll bring up um, this other one. Let me move him over. See, it looks a lot different 
Same with these little guys up here. Move them down here. It's like they're swimming around. <laughs> here, we'll put them here. We'll turn this other guy off. We'll move him. How about that? There we go. So you can see that can that can also make your um, your drawing look a lot different if you if you just focus on things like colors around the things you're drawing. I mean, look at this now; it doesn't look as bright. Maybe I'd want to go in and brighten that up or something like that. But we are out of time, so I want to thank you guys for watching today's C-SPAN. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow where you can see my friend Tom doing some super fun music, and uh, and also don't forget to look for Ellen Prager reading her book three times a week, and look for my videos, Drawing Animals from the Galapagos. But I'm going to put my pencil down, and until next time, guys, I will see you later.